Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Yamamoto Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest, sitting in my studio right here next to me, my old friend, the man they call the Greek myth, former IFBB pro and the owner of Beauty Fit Nutrition, Jimmy Mentis. How's it going? How are you? Thanks for coming, man. Good to see you, man. We've been trying to get you down here to the studio. Yeah. I mean, you're a Floridian. I'm a Floridian now, so. You're in the boonies, but it's nice. Yeah, actually. yeah. Well, we made it happen. Yeah. We made it happen. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's take people back for people who might not know who you are. You know, you know, your hair's getting a little gray, a little less. A little? You know, yeah. <laughs> I dyed mine. That's where I start. <laughs> but, you know, back in the day, I remember going to the NPC Nationals in 94. It was the first NPC National show I ever attended. You know, everyone's like, you got to go to the Nationals and see it. I remember I was a huge Metrics fan. Uh, later, I would go on to work for them. But... Uh, Paul DeMeo was in that show and, and he won the Nationals. I remember seeing you up on stage and I remember back then you knew everyone who competed because it yeah. was only bodybuilding. It yeah. was, there were small classes. The best guys in the world did the Nationals and it didn't matter. And if you placed top 10, everyone knew who you are. Yeah. Paul, Paul was in it. Don Long was in it. Tony Freeman was in Craig it. Craig Titus. Dente, Craig Titus. Um, a lot of guys were in it. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was a big thing. I remember uh, in the, um, I'm trying to think, I think Derek Whitsett won the. Right. Light heavies? He won the light heavyweight class. That's no right. He dropped down. He dropped down from heavy. Yeah, there was no super heavyweights. Though. Yeah, it yeah. It was it was a it was a brutal class. The Craig Licker won the middleweights. Right. I can I can I can remember the show like it was yesterday, and it was it was 1994. Yeah. Um, was, you were right up there though. I mean, you yeah. were a guy people were talking that about was, who was going to be the next the next big thing. That was uh, that was the last show I did in the, in the U.S. And, as an amateur. So and tell us what happened. What did you do after that? I just. Um, I thought that I was at the best at my time mm -hmm. at that point, and I just saw that I just needed to, I needed to go to the next step, and I right. knew I wasn't going to do it through uh, the NPC. Well, there was, the so, guys were just killing it. I mean, there were it was a very deep, was, deep lineups was, at the national level. It, they only gave one pro card away. There was only back then. There was only pro card at the nationals, USA's, and North Americans. And there was one. There, well, the nationals, you had the to nationals, win, you won weight, weight class, class but, right? In the USA's, you had to win the overall. Right. So, I the, the guys. It, town was so deep mm -hmm. and the guys were so good and um, I was just tired of being an amateur and mm -hmm. I just knew that um, there was an opportunity for I just want to turn this into a business but I loved what I did mm -hmm. so there was an opportunity for me to go back to Greece and mm -hmm. um, compete you know for the fourth time and you were you were I, I, you were born I, here but you were Greek you had Greek citizenship Greek citizenship yeah and then um, I got the green light to go back to uh, compete Back so, in Greece. so when you got on stage again at the Nationals there in, in Greece, compared to yeah, competing was, um, as De Mayo, I mean, what were the guys like? Well, it, it was it was um, it, it was. You know, let's see it up there. Um, there, the guys that I competed with, right? There was a big difference. Yeah. But but the the camaraderie I still had with the guys in Greece was mm -hmm. like you know Jimmy's coming back to compete. Right. You know he's gone to the states, come back to compete. Sure. You know, and and if he wins and stuff like that, you know. But I, I knew I was going to win. Yeah, of course. You know? I mean, there was no one even but, close to you. But I, I, I liked that I went back to compete with, you know, my, my fellow Greek, you know. You were one of the first people to do that because they didn't really give pro cards for national. I don't know why no, they I didn't. Think, I, I think, and I'm not going to say I, I know for a fact, but I think I was the one of the first guys mm -hmm. that opened this door that if you win a country that you actually, you don't get your pro card. You get, obviously, you get a letter of recommendation. To, you could to apply compete, for a pro to apply, status. Yeah, to let a recommendation from the country you win mm -hmm. to, you know, go in and. and I think they, it, I status. call it the Jimmy Mentis rule. I think they used it on Victor I mean, Victor Richards. Victor Richards went back to Nigeria, to Nigeria <laughs> and competed against 120 pound you know marathon runners yeah. and got his pro card uh, after that. I think Victor, uh, if he would have died it down, he would have won the nationals here. <laughs> probably, he probably would have. Have to go back to the. That's, uh, that's right. To the uh, to Nigeria. So you get your pro card. Now you're a pro. What, how did that change your life, or Nothing. did it? It really didn't change my life. It just, um, it just gave me a, a, I was in a different mental state. I, I knew that all the blood, sweat, and tears from, you know, 84. Cause I, my first show was 84. Was Teenage Mr. Greece. Oh, so you, you really yeah. competing a long time. So, you know, it took me, you know, 10 years, 10 years to turn pro, and that's yeah. all I did, Dave. Right. You know, I mean, I was, I was, you know, training and dieting. You know, I even went to the military. You lived least. the lifestyle. Yeah, even through the whole military, I was still dieting and training. What, you, you know? they, would they allow yeah. you to do that? Well, I, I made it. I made it work, you know, so. What's the military like in Greece? I mean, it, it, is, is it terrible? Yeah, yeah. You, you lose your, you know, you, you don't wear civilian clothes, you know, you're just. How many years is it? Up, you know, 24 months. Oof. Is that mandatory in Greece? Yeah, it's mandatory. So it's like Israel almost. You have yeah, to go in the military because it's a small yeah, country. Yeah, but I, 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 it did. I, I, 
I did good. And did it, you have fun? I had fun. Oh, you it, did. Okay. It made me more of a man. Did you travel around and the I, world, or you stayed no, in Greece? No, I stayed in Greece. Oh, I, so. I was in, um, I was on a couple islands, you mm -hmm. know, a few months, and then I went back to uh, the mainland. Mm -hmm. But uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Right. It was um, discipline. I had discipline. But I already had that from from bodybuilding. So, sure. So it was it was a combination. So I did both. Well, you if you were born in, in the United States, though, right? I was born in so Germany. why did you go back to Greece? Uh, my parents moved back to Greece in eighty. Um, it's in eighty. Okay, and yeah. you didn't want, and you had to go back with them, yeah, obviously. obviously I, was, yeah. I was a kid, so I went, we moved yeah. back, and I played, I played soccer in Greece, mm -hmm. and then um, I got hacked, I, I tore an ACL in, um, in mm -hmm. 1982 on a soccer field, and I ended up going into a gym. Ah. And I never left. Yeah, once you get bit yeah. by that bug, you know, yeah. it never goes. Then like, the legs are growing, then the arms are right, growing, right. and I said, you know what, me. Uh, let me see what I can do. When you competed uh, with the, with the, in the IPV, obviously the pro ranks, um, you know what was it like going from that amateur level? Now you're up with the pros, all the guys that were winning the nationals in USA. Was it, were you starstruck at first? Well, the, I was always starstruck. But yeah. the thing is, you know, my training partner back then was Richie Gasparri. Okay. So so you know, I already I already knew the you know the intensity of training because sure. you know, Rich just kicked the shit out of me. Yeah. yeah Rich liked the train. He's still like he still, still trains he still like does. that. He still I said does. Rich how do you do it? No, I don't. I still have the injuries? I don't get it. Oh, no. But but our leg workouts and our back workouts and every workout was like epic, it, yeah. Yeah, it was just it was horrible. It was, it was just and he horrible. loved it. He just loved it. You must have hard so, it, hated going to the gym. You, you like you know, it but you at the same time I had to because I was training with Rich Gaspari. Yeah. You know, and he was getting ready for the Olympia and this and this and this and and that then, motivated you. And then, you know, I just, I was just going home beat up, mm -hmm. but I kept going back for more. But I learned, I learned you know, a lot, a lot from him. Mm -hmm. But knowing Rich and meeting Rich and, you know, being with Rich, I met all the other guys too. You know? uh, so you kind so of I well knew, connected. I kind of knew everybody. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I, when I turned pro, you know, it was kind of a, hey, I'm here now. Gotcha. Right? Um, but, you know, the camaraderie that we had back then in the 90s, mm -hmm. it was just, I mean, we were all brothers. Yeah, but there was also, but there was a lot of, there was a lot of, you know, rough, rough and tumble. Like guys didn't fuck yeah, around. People no. would punch each other out yeah, back then. Yeah. No one cared about, the, you know, what the ramifications were back then. Nothing. Do you remember any like no. incidents? Oh, you, you're digging for stories, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm digging for stories. Um, well, there's, there's a. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. I know you know all the stories. Even if you weren't there, I know you know the stories. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of stories. Um, you know, at the. Um, oh man. <laughs> um, there was a. I'm not gonna say where, okay. but it was a it was a pro show that we were all backstage, and um, a fight broke out. Between. Uh, <laughs> this wasn't Mike Quinn, was it? No. Oh, okay. No. Because Mike uh, Quinn punched someone yeah, out backstage yeah, yeah, in, that in was, the European tour. That was in the European tour. Yeah. Oh, I could. I got. I got a good story. For okay. You. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna switch it up a little. Right. Um, European tour, um, 1986 Athens Grand Prix. Okay. Okay. In Greece. In Greece. Greece. Yeah. In Greece. And um, that's the year Lee Labrada beat Rich. Okay, and I'm, okay. I know Rich wasn't happy about that, right? <laughs> Shit at the fan. <laughs> okay, so so Rich had his second place vase or vase, whatever you want to call yeah. it. It was like it was huge, right? Mm -hmm. And he didn't want nothing. I know Rich is going to hate me for saying yeah. this, but I'm going to say it. Okay, he didn't want nothing. Oh, he was winning everything, and then he, he didn't got want beat. Nothing yeah. to do with this thing. Okay. okay? So obviously they went on to other countries and he just left it behind. Oh, really? Just left it behind. Okay. <laughs> so, so. You probably sold it. So I know. No, yeah. it, was, it was a story. <laughs> so I think after year after year, year after year went by, I kept moving house. I kept moving from one place to another. Oh, right? so you had it. So I kept it. Yeah. Okay. So I moved back to the States. Right. And I fly back from Greece uh -huh. to the States, two airplane tickets. With the thing? Me and the vase. You really took it? Yes. Oh I brought the back home. And then when I showed up at his house, yeah. he turned around and he goes, what is that? I'm like, I forgot something. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay. And he still has it. Well, he, now he yeah. had to keep it after yeah. all the, yeah. the travel that yeah. thing went through. I, let me tell you, um, you know, I, I moved so many times from that point on to mm -hmm. I moved to the States that I had so many times people were telling me, you don't need this. What is this? Yeah, you, know, yeah. you can get one for free, you know, down in Athens. I'm right. like, no, this, this, this has sentimental value to a friend of mine. And I you knew one day you were going to give it back to him. I, I knew someday I was going to give it back to him. I, I, I gave it back to him. That's great. It would have been better if it was the first place trophy, yeah, I guess. But. He, he did not like that one. No, well, that, that, but that, sometimes you have to be reminded yeah. that you're, you know, it has something that needs to humble you yeah. a little bit. 
have to be reminded where you came from, you know, that not all wins. Yeah, you know? no, it was... Uh, you had a lot of losses in your life and a lot of wins. I got my ass kicked. Yeah. Many times. Yeah. You know, How did, you know, when you get to the pros and you, and you, and you can't win anymore, is, is, is it take the fun out of it? Um, you know, I, I hate losing. Mm-hmm. Okay. No, I know you do. That's so, why I asked you that. So the, the way, I, the way I, 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 I spin that was I'm going to win. I'm very self-aware or I became more self-aware in the, in the, once I turned pro. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, if I can't win in competition, I'm going to win outside of competition. And that's why I toured a lot. Mm. I, I, I toured a lot. You made money. Yeah. Guess posing. I'm, I'm going to say I made money, but I, I toured a lot. 96, 97, 98. I was, I was on the road 32 weeks out of 52. And what were you doing? Guess, guess posing. And how will you get these gigs? Just from talking with yeah, promoters? Yeah, promoters. I think a lot of people don't do that anymore. Yeah, they don't. I did that in, the, in 02, 03, 04. I probably did 70 guest yeah, posing appearances. Yeah. You got you to gotta talk yeah, the to these guy, promoters. The, you, nowadays, you just got to, you know, I don't know what it is now with social media. I, I, see, back then, we just, we just showed up at the show. Mm-hmm. You know, now you got, you know, videos three weeks out, two yeah. weeks out, <laughs> one week out. Exactly. You know? I mean... Now you know what I you, you know what I'm going to look like. Right. You know I'm going to pay a hundred dollars to see you. You know. It's also, there's six thousand people in the show, so they don't even want to guest poses anymore. Very rarely do you see a guest poser at a show anymore, unless it's like a smaller show where they want to attract you know the local people to come watch it. Back then, don't forget. Back then, the the promoters spent a lot of money. You know to promote a show. And there wasn't that many people on the no. show, so you know you had you had to draw an audience, or you didn't or you didn't make any cash. Nowadays. You got a thousand people in the show. The the entry fees alone, you made your money back. And Plus, that's, and that's where they focus on. Yeah, and, yeah. And I think that's where the promoters need to need to you know change things around. You know, I, I try to figure it out. I don't know if you have a solution. I, I said you know it, it, these shows are too long, so you have to put them on multiple days. But will people actually go multiple days? That's the question. You know, I, w- what's the solution to these shows that are these monstrously convoluted shows with so many divisions and so many competitors? Obviously, good for the sport. Sports growing, but how do you make it interesting anymore? Well, here's what here's what my, my issue is is when you see more athletes on stage, or pe- or more athletes signed up to compete more than than, or, than people in the audience, there's a problem. Mm. Okay, um, I went to the collegiate nationals this year. Right. Okay, in Pittsburgh, there were what 1,500 athletes. Probably yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. I went Thursday and Friday. I think there were maybe 100 people in the seats. Well, but who could watch this? But the thing is, is that you know, where is everybody? Now, are we are we promoting shows? I'm gonna say we because I'm part mm. of this. Okay? Yeah, of course. Are we promoting shows for for entry fees? Mm. Are we promoting shows for entertainment? Well, when you have when you have it's entertaining, but how how long could you sit it's there? Not, it's four days long, yeah. the Masters Nationals. Yeah. Four days. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I, it's it's hard for people to sit down and they would sit and watch their friends and then they leave. Whereas back in the day, we would stay because oh, we yeah. want to see the overall men's oh, yeah. bodybuilding yeah. You know, finals. I mean, that was the finale of the show. Now the bikini's the finale of the show. Right. Right. The yeah. men are over. Yeah. They let the men out early. We're done. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, old, we're old news. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's tough, but you know what? That's why I like going to the Olympia and the Arnold because it still has that old feel of that. But even still, even in the Olympia, there was, there was 35 bikini you know, pros. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's supposed to be the elite of the elite, you know? But there's so many pro shows that every girl who wins a show gets an invite to the Olympia, you know? So the, you know, I guess it's good. It's good and healthy for the sport, but maybe not for the spectators. I well, we, we, it's got to be a balance, right? Yeah. I think if there's a balance, I I'd rather see more more people in the audience than athletes competing. Yeah. Well, because like I said, the quality is better. The Olympia was 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 a was a big deal change was it because busy? it was busy. It's always packed. The Arnold's the same way. Yeah. And I think because it's something special. It's like the Super Bowl, right. you know, and uh, I, I the or the playoffs, you know. Not many people watch the whole baseball season except the diehard baseball that's fans, but then everyone watches the playoffs and the World me. Series. Yeah, yeah, me too, because we don't have time, right? <laughs> so I think it's the same with the bodybuilding fans. The shows are so big now that unless your friend's in the show or you're going there because you're in the show, no one cares about watching it, but we still want to watch the big ones. Right. The big, the, you know, the, the, the two biggies, you know, I guess that would be the and New York Pro, I'd have to classify up there. That, that audience is always sold out, has been since the very beginning. East Coast. East Coast. Big, yeah, well, that's big, yeah, big bodybuilding. Hard, hardcore. Right, so w- at what point did you say to yourself, I want to turn bodybuilding into a business where I can earn a living? And, and how did you go about doing that? Since day one. Since day one. Since the day I turned pro. Mm-hmm. That's why I didn't do a lot of pro shows. Right. Why? Yeah, because I was on the road. Right. All right so you're yeah. on the road. At some point you say to yourself, all right, I got to get off the road. 
you know, how, how long can I continue to do this bodybuilding thing? I got to start a business for myself to make money, yeah. to support myself. Because I don't want to go to, you don't want to go to Walmart and have to get a job. Nothing yeah. against Walmart, but I know you. That's not the kind of person you are. You, you, you're, you're your own boss. Cool. I'm the same way. <laughs> <laughs> so I, how do you do that? How do you make it happen? Because well, people was, out there are watching. Well, this was before social media you made right. this happen. Well, I was always interested in, in dietary supplements, mm -hmm. vitamins and fat burners and stuff like that. So I was, I was always... My original fat burner that I created for myself, um, I went to Wild Oats. It was a, it was a compare of Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. okay? I was Whole Foods having bought them out. Yes. It was, it was, a, it was a, a grocery store, a health food store called Wild Oats. And they had bulk ingredients mm -hmm. and I went in there and I bought the guaranas and I bought the UMBs mm -hmm. and I bought the caffeine and I bought that and you know I bought the the clear jet the soft uh, the capsules mm -hmm. and I took them home and I took the little thing and I was did you really you else. really did that that's how I started as a matter of fact that's one of my first <laughs> really yeah. your first yeah. beauty fit yeah. ones no not beauty fit but oh. my first it was a um, it was called the JM Pro line okay back in the in the 90s it was a fat burner and I called it the Advanced Lipocatabolic System. So you just basically combined all these ingredients I yourself just, in your yeah, kitchen? In my kitchen, and I made little little capsules, <laughs> and I put it in Ziploc bags, and then I was, I was teaching spinning class back then. You were? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, hard to believe. That might have been the first spin classes yeah. of all time. I, I, How'd you get into doing that? Um, well, there was, um, I, was, uh, I was training at a, at a club called Planet Fitness, but the original Planet Fitness, not the, oh, not okay. the way it is now. Not so, what we see now. No, it was, it was more hardcore. It was just one. It was just one. Um, in Jersey? No, in Florida. Okay. And they had created a spinning class. Mm -hmm. They were building a spinning class. And I just, I fell in love with the spinning. It was a hardcore. I didn't know you were so into yeah, like the no, aer into aer aerobic type stuff. No, but I liked it because it was, you know, it was, it, it was endurance, more endurance, not the fast, the climbs. Right. But the, but the bodybuilding, bodybuilding, you must have been like huffing and puffing. Yeah, you were but I liked dude. it because I, I could eat more. Okay. So the more cardio, I was, you know, the right. more anaerobic exercise, I was just be able to eat. So I got into that and I started teaching. I got certified, I started teaching. But it, when I was teaching the classes, I was given the girls, or most of, most of the, the, the people taking my class were girls. And I was like, here, take this before class, take this right. before class. Oh, so you're giving all your fat like, friends that. shit, what is it? You know, and I'm like, maybe I should bottle this. And that's how, that's how I started. That's really how you that's got into how it? I started. And then, and then I named it Advanced Lipocatabolic System, and then I wanted to be all fancy, and I, and I <laughs> freaking, and I labeled it ALS. Not knowing, oh my god! Not knowing it's Lou Gehrig's disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I renamed that, and I called it Crunch Time. Ah, okay. Same formula. Really? Yeah. Did you were you still making it yourself, or were you? No, I, other, I, I, you went to a manufacturer. I expanded. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's pretty time consuming to do that. It probably wasn't very profitable. Either. <laughs> I expanded. I went. And I did. I think 150 bottles. And that's then, how, that's and how then, I started. And with then my Planet Fitness was, was selling it. We were, I was basically selling it through the girls who were taking my class. Uh, and then they were telling their friends, and they were telling their friends, and next thing you know, right. you know, there were some GNC franchises around the area. You know, they, Only you could pull this off, and you sold it to them? Yeah, I sold it to them. And then I had some friends in, in Greece, I sold it to them. Right. And that, my friend, is still the original formula called Beauty Fuel that I have under the Beauty Fit line. So when did, when did Beauty Fit first come to be? At, Beauty, as, Fit as started, Beauty Fit started, uh, Beauty Fit started in 2000. Okay. 2010. Well, you know, I used to own Body Well. Yes. And type Curves. Mm -hmm. And then I, 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 I sold our, I sold my the brand at that point, and then um, I turned the corner and when I started Beauty Fit. What I like about the way you did business is because you had no money. Yeah. No, you did no, this no. on no money. How does someone out there who's watching this with no money get started? How do you, how do you do it? Just, like, um, what do you recommend if someone's watching and says, you know, what, I'd love to start my own supplement line, but I, I don't have any cash to do you know, it. You know what it is, Dave? You don't burn any bridges. You don't hurt anybody. Yeah. So you had a lot, you, you have, have built up a lot of relationships yeah. from all the traveling you did. All, all the traveling, all my friends, all the people, all the, all the relationships that I built, mm -hmm. I was able to make a couple of phone calls and they said, Jimbo, if this is you, we'll take it. Wow. That was it. So you really, it. you were your, your own best salesman. Yeah. Yeah. I was, you know, my, my word, my word and my, and, and me not screwing anybody over mm. was um, basically what help me what I found to be amazing and, and I didn't know this to this day when we were talking before the show I said you know you know how many employees you got and you're like yeah. uh, me and my yeah. brother <laughs> and, yeah. and beauty fits a big company yeah we're like four employees <laughs> <That's> crazy. Yeah. <laughs> four, four, four. you guys do everything your yeah. sales and, you know yeah. distribution everything because the the process because I've been in this so long mm -hmm. right I've been in this what 15 years now is now. the key to keep your overhead low 
That's what I found. Yeah, the key is to keep your overhead low, and the the best, the best. I mean, the, it's, it's good products. Mm -hmm. Period. Who form? Do you do all the formulations? Do all the formulations. And you come up with the ideas. I come up with the ideas. I do the formulations. Obviously, I work with other researchers and sure. stuff. You know, because you know, I might be. I'm the crazy one, right? So they'll reel, they'll reel me back in. But um, you know, so um, yeah, and they they put a stamp on it, and, mm -hmm. you know. But I do all the flavoring. You do? Yeah, I do all the flavoring. Yeah, I I'm, I always have to taste everything myself because I, I believe that I, I I don't know if this is an ego main maniacal thing, but I think that I, I have the best sense of yeah, me taste too. and me smell. Too. Yeah, me too. There was a couple there was a couple of uh, flavors under the beauty recovery the, the aminos that I didn't agree to, mm -hmm. um, but. The six other girls. Oh, they liked it. <laughs> yeah, they liked it. So I'm like, okay, you know, if yeah. this doesn't sell, this is all on you girls. Right, right, right. It's probably the number one seller. Is it really? <laughs> so awesome? maybe learned, you don't know. I learned to listen a little. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you decide to come to market with a new product, mm -hmm. I mean, is there any market research, or are you just basically saying, I think this is going to go. Let's try it. Um, both, mm -hmm. both. Like if I have, like for the for the, the beauty bump, for mm -hmm. example, right? That's, that's the, the cream that they the rub on cream, that yeah. helps burn fat right. locally. That's okay. a, that's a cellulite cream. Um, that I don't need to, to do any more research. I just come out with new fragrances. I see. So what's what's the top selling fragrance? Um, we have ten right now. Right. Um, what sells the most? There's five that are right up there: vanilla, sweet pea, um, chocolate cake. Oh wow! Yeah, chocolate cake. You, you, has anyone ever told you they've eaten the the, the, the creams? Are I'm they sorry. non are they non caloric? Well, yeah, they look pretty. Way. They look tasty. You know. Yeah. They um. <laughs> They smell really good. You, know, you want to eat it, right? Yeah. But you can't. Um, I wonder if you get any insulin release from rubbing that stuff on and smelling it. <laughs> you can sometimes trick your receptors. Right, right, you know, yeah, right, yeah. right. Um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah they, there's, there's quite a few of them. I'm coming out with, um, with a new one really soon. Now, I didn't know this. You told me you were in uh, Bed Bath & Beyond for yeah. a while. That's yeah. pretty impressive that you can get into three, it. Three years now. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, to get your product into a into a real yeah. who says bodybuilders aren't mainstream? No. Would you ever sell to like Walmart or anything like that? I have. I have sold. Some oh, you have. The wow. company we're in Walmart. The Tight Curves brand that I was in. I didn't know that. We we're in Walmart in Canada. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but I'm saying, but in the United States, you, well, it almost seems like Walmart. If you get in there, you're gonna make a lot of money. But also, it, everyone says, well, you know, then you're not a real brand anymore. Well, if you're in Walmart. I will. I will not take beauty. That's but yeah, you're right. I, I, if I had a different brand, if I had a different uh, business, mm -hmm. um, is it too high end for Walmart? You think it's too high end, and plus, I think you're you're really fighting with the 800 pound gorilla. You right. know, they they get you know they, they call you up, they take all take all your shit back. Yeah, and then you go out of business. They put you out of business. What are you gonna do? I know Muscle Tech had a big problem with that. Time. You know, with the, with the recall on I think with uh, hydroxy hydroxy cut. cut. It's scary. It's just, people don't realize it's a scary business yeah. because when you put out a lot of product and you and, and you're bigger, there's more. Chance for you to get sued, right. for you to be put out of business. You get sued every day. Yeah, yeah. Every I mean, day you get sued. isn't that? I mean, that that's kind of makes it ugly. The the, the business. Uh, and you see, everybody wants to come out with their own brands now, or their own product, and this mm -hmm. and that. You know, I I encourage that, but on the other side, I think like just coming out with your own product is crazy mm -hmm. because you have to have some kind of background. You have to have some kind of relationships. You have to have some kind of say so in the arena you're at. Mm -hmm. you know, just coming out with your own product and saying, oh, I'm gonna make millions of dollars. I mean, that's a shot in the dark, you know? Sometimes I see people who succeed and I don't even know how they succeed. Right. And then other times I see other people, I'm like, they're gonna kill it and then they, they don't make it. How many brands do we know, you and I know, mm -hmm. that had millions and millions and millions and six months later they're bankrupt? And then you have other guys who start out of their garage mm -hmm. and Sold for four hundred some million. <laughs> it, 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 it seems like there's no rhyme nor reason. No, no. So it's it's scary in a sense because you don't know what your fate is going to be in a sense. You know, uh, but do you have trouble uh, not cheapening your products? Because I know there's always ways to cut corners, and I, I see a lot of companies nowadays, especially with the whey proteins, they put in crappy ingredients and they and they and they they take shortcuts. And it seems like everyone's getting caught nowadays because mm -hmm. everyone has an HPLC machine right, right. and is testing your testing products. It. And you know, I take pride in the fact that our products are 100% and maybe over 100%. Right. Um, and I'm, I know you're the same way. Um, is it tough for you not, you know, because you say, I, well, if I can, if I can save two dollars on this I product, don't even, I don't even entertain it. You don't entertain no. it. No, I'm sure no. the manufacturers my, approach all, you. All, all my, all my customers, my girls or whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. um, they, they really appreciate the good product. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I mean, they'll pay 49, 50, 49 dollars, 54 dollars for the beauty bag, right. you know, or you know, 39 dollars for the, uh, for the beauty bomb and. You know, forty-four dollars for the pre-workout. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll put it on sale once in a while, but sure. So you don't, you, you know, don't, you don't cheapen the product. I, 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 there's so many ways I could. Mm -hmm. You know, 
but I won't even, I don't even entertain it. Mm. It's when you have a good brand and, and people want to, people appreciate the good brand. Mm -hmm. And if you know, you sell it, you're good. Mm. You know, that's in Puerto Rico. We just got in Puerto Rico and vitamin world in Puerto Rico. Are they still, uh, is vitamin world still standing? I don't know if if the stores are still standing, but you know, we, we did a soft launch in Puerto Rico and then we're going, going to the other stores now. It's a big, it's a big marketplace. A lot of people don't realize, you know, we sold out in 72 hours. Did you really? Wow, yeah, that's crazy. Now, uh, Vitamin World is one of your your big yeah. chain store manufacturers. Yeah. You were telling me earlier. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, they you said they've been restructured now. Recently? Yeah, I think I heard they're they're restructuring and mm. they're going to close some stores, but you know they want to come mm. up stronger. What do you think the fate of the brick and mortar retail store is, especially given the fact that everyone's on their phones? Amazon, this thing, but everything was shopping online. Yeah. I mean, I do it. I find myself doing it. I'm on the toilet and I'm ordering stuff from Amazon. I'm like, what the hell did I just do? I just bought five hundred dollars worth of stuff. I'm right there with you. <laughs> I'm right there with you. And I go to the front door like a little yeah. kid every day. So yeah, I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, w- what is the fate of the brick and mortar? So, do you think that they're going to not be in existence anymore, or will they just be like a showcase? I mean, I don't know about that, but I can tell you that I am building the brand Beauty Fit mm-hmm. as online. You are. Yeah, I think that's what you have to yeah. do almost. And then if, it, if these stores want to take it, great. Yeah. It's when, I see, when I see most of our internet orders are 80% from a mobile phone. Isn't that crazy? You know? I, I, I find that young kids today don't even know how to use a computer. Yeah. They only know how to use their phone. Yeah. They, they edit with Photoshop on their right. phone. They, right. I mean, everything's an app, you know, nowadays. I feel like an old guy. I'm like, I'm on my computer. I'm thinking like I'm a high tech. And they're like, what's that? How do you, how do you access anything on, on the computer? You know, I'm like worried about my website looking on the computer. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. it looks like shit on the phone. Yeah. I, gotta, I gotta go back and change it, you we know? We structure everything. The, the, uh, Marcus and, and Andrew, the, my, my two guys that have been, they've been so loyal to me. And mm-hmm. I have these guys, you know, shout out to them. Um, we structure everything from the phone. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy? The, the website, right. the, the checkout process, yeah. everything through the phone. Pretty soon the, the judges will be judging the Mr. Olympia from through their the phones. Phone. They'll yeah. sit in the hotel room they'll just say, oh, oh first place, good. second place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't even have to be there. What did you think about the Olympia? I'm going to spend this on you. Yeah. I thought Phil Heath deserved to win. Uh, you know, I, I tell people, look, you got to sit in the front row with the, with the judges if you want to make a true judgment call on the Olympia because it looks different from pictures. It looks different from video. It looks different from the phone. I can't tell you, you know, you know, back in the day when you were shredded, okay, on stage, you go and get the pictures back or the video back, you're like, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. That you should have seen me on stage. Right. I was peeled. And, and nobody believes you. No, no, no. <laughs> Nowadays, you know, you know, there's so many people out there, you know, taking pictures and everything, but, but you got to be there in person. So, you know, to say Phil Heath didn't deserve to win and the big Rami did is, is to me was, was, was a, I know it was a slap in the face for Phil and the judges because these armchair, you know, judges at home, right. judging from their, right. not even from a computer screen, from their phone, right. you know, it's just disrespectful. Yeah. I know. saw two pictures and I knew Phil had won it all the way. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, hands down. Conditional, conditioning yeah, wins shows. Just, just hands down. Rami was not in the shape that he needed to be. Ryan needs to lose 10, 15, yeah. 10, 15 I, pounds. I agree 100%. Yeah. I agree one. Did you see the fiasco that took place this past weekend with the 212 uh, division in uh, no. Asia, the Asia Grand no. Prix? I don't know Flex won. Flex, right? Yeah, Flex Lewis won, but they, you know, there was a big controversy. There was a guy from Iran, Hadi Shupin, uh-huh. who um, couldn't get a visa to come to the Olympia, and a lot of people felt he should have won. You know, uh, they would put up very skewed pictures where Flex didn't look that good in the pictures, uh-huh. but you know, he might have deserved to win. But this was Flex was receiving death threats. No. Yes, uh, from these people, these Iranian people who thought that their guy should have won, and they were like saying they were gonna rape his wife, and it was, it was, ter- it was, it was horrible. And I said, you know, the, we're in like a mob, the right. internet nowadays is like mob mentality. You can't control it. It's like a runaway train, and people get caught up in it. I tell people, you know what, turn your computer off. That's the easiest way to, 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 to get away from it. I like to see Flex go up 10 pounds, 15 pounds, and go up to the open. Well, we all would. We want to see, you know, we, want, we, we all want to see bigger. Bigger is always no, better. No, I just think, I, I, know, I, know, I know Flex suffers. The 212. Oh yeah, well he's got to make weight. I mean, yeah. no one wants to make weight, yeah. you know. Look, you know, I think I think the 212 class is amazing because I think it adds another level of excitement to the Olympia. You know, those guys are always way more conditioned than the open guys are. It's, there's no I doubt about bring, it. I think they bring it better than the big guys. What do you? I ask my question for you. What do you think about the classic physique division? Because that would have been a division that J- Jimmy Mentis yeah. might have been in. Yeah, Jimmy Mentis actually was thinking about it. Too. Had it been around? Oh, you were thinking yeah, about a comeback? Are oh, you out of your mind? What are you crazy? You're right. You're right. <laughs> 
right. <laughs> you're making money. <laughs> you're absolutely right. I, I realized that I was out of my you mind. You saw Flex Wheeler and you're like, maybe I can do this. No, too. It, was, it was with Kevin. Oh, really? Yeah, when Kevin, I talked to Kevin and Kevin's like, you know, hey. What are you at now? Right now, I'm thinking about 250, 250. Okay, so what do you, for you what, and how tall are you? 6'1. So you'd have to weigh what, about two? 198. <laughs> no, you know, you'd be like probably like 220. Probably. You 20, could probably get down there. I think I started at 220. <laughs> I think in 84, I competed teenager at 220. You can get down to 220. I don't know, man. My structure's You'd be different. miserable, I got though. Nerve can you imagine everything. dieting now? Yeah, no calves. Oh, you don't? Done. From my for So maybe you should body. do men's physique. I don't know. Man. They don't judge the legs. Yeah, they do. They, the calves show. <laughs> no, but they don't really judge them. <laughs> Have you seen the calves on some of these guys? They're terrible. <laughs> I'm just going to stay, try to get in shape. And, you can start wearing one of those little out. waist shapers. Do you, do you sell those with the, the beauty do. fit? So you, could, that's a, you could be the, the, the poster. Maybe you get some guys to start carrying uh, using your products. I got, I got guys actually using the products. Do they really? Yeah. Which, which products do they like? The beauty bum. You know, well, it's a, it's, a, it's, a lot of guys in, in, in the Olympia and the men's physique and all that, they're actually... Are they really? They yeah. use it? They, what do they put it on and then they put the waist shaper they over put it? They put the shaper, the glutes, hamstrings, you know. Yeah, but it I works on abs, right? Yeah. 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 Well, you, you said you based a lot of the, the formulations on the old Thiomucase the that we used to use back in the, in the what this days. Does, days. What this beauty bomb does is um, it, we actually have studies that it actually attacks the fat cells. Mm -hmm. And it, the, more, the more you use, it's not a matter of you know, how long it's going to take. Mm -hmm. It actually, within that process, within the, first, within the two weeks, mm -hmm. um, it actually shrinks the fat cells. Obviously, you can't does. destroy the fat cells. Well, it dehydrates them yeah. probably to yeah. a certain degree. It, and, it really, and I mean, I knew it was good. Mm -hmm. Okay, Let's, you, listen, it's all dietary supplements. Okay, you still, you still have to train, you still have to exercise. But when I created the Beauty Bomb mm -hmm. with bases on the thymu case, right, mm -hmm. I knew it was good, but I didn't know it was this good. Right. Okay, it looked great on paper. <laughs> it looked, you know, it theoretically worked. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, it looked great on paper, and I said, you know what? Let's try it. Okay, so when I launched it, I, I soft launched it. Okay, mm -hmm. it was my second product. Were you, you were giving out a lot of tubs for yeah. tubes for free, yeah. weren't you initially? Yeah. Because I, I knew the formula looked good on paper, but I didn't want to put it out there unless I knew people get results. People get results, right? So we tested it on you know a couple of people, and they're like they saw results. So I said, all right, let's put it out there. So I was giving it away too. Mm -hmm. So when when we did the studies though. The studies came back so positive mm -hmm. that I actually stopped production. Oh, really? Changed the whole label. Okay. What'd you do to the label? I, I basically took a piece of the formula and I put it in a proprietary blend and I trademarked it under Dermacore. Oh, because you don't want anyone stealing it from right. me. Right. I got gotcha. you. Right. You know, because everybody out there, so there's people out there saying that they, they actually have Beauty Balm right now. Uh, they they really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there's nothing like Beauty Balm. Uh, there's other. Uh, there's Do you other, have a patent on this? There's formula. other transdermals. There's mm -hmm. other. Yeah, they can say whatever they want. I'm not saying they're they're not good. And I'm not saying, mm -hmm. but there's nothing like. Well, you have your own unique formula. Right. And then there's other right. companies that have their. Right. But there's not that many out there. Let's face it. There's not that many people doing creams. You, although they might be in the future. But do you know I started that category? I, first of all, I started yeah. the whole women's category. I that I know. Okay. Then then when I had Beauty Bomb and I went to Bodybuilding.com with it, they're like, we don't carry transdermals. Because we, we didn't do anything with them before. Mm -hmm. that, that category was done. Okay? Which is weird. Yeah, it was done. Why, why anyone wouldn't yeah. sell it? So, Beauty Bomb goes, goes into GNC. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants Beauty Bomb now, right? So, once Beauty Bomb. You have Bomb no came competition out, right, there. That's so, the greatest idea, right. you know? So, once Beauty Bomb came out, now everybody, all the girls, social media, this and this and that, transdermal. This is working. This is working. And they're like, you know what? Let's ride his coattails. Mm hmm. So that's where all the other people were trying to bring, you right, know, right. the whole transdermal. Do you market. find that one, now that other companies are coming out with these things that you're having more trouble selling it in no, terms of, or no? No, no. They, they might use that. I mean, we've had people say we've tried something else, but, you know, we... Well, I think you have a good name, too. I like it. You I like the competition. Yeah. I, don't, I don't mind the competition. What I don't like is when people talk shit about me. Well, which is, you know, is going to happen. Which I don't yeah. talk shit about anybody. Right. But people, you know? that's how people do sales. They yeah. do negative sales. They have to. Yeah. They have to. I don't talk bad about any product. Yeah. People ask me, what do I think about us? I don't know enough of it, which I don't. Well, yeah. You can't, com you can only comment on your own stuff. I mean, you know what's in your product and, and you're obviously confident with it and you're successful with it. And I think that that's important, you know, that, that you believe in what you're doing, you know, and, and you like what you're doing. I love I, what I do. I always see what, I see your shows or I see your things that I could just say, I yeah. see the gleam, you have that same yeah. gleam I do. You like being where you are. You love to bullshit I, with people. I freaking love what I do. <laughs> I won't change it. I'm up, 
I'm up all night, all day, you know. You're an adrenaline junkie, yeah. What do you, where do you see yourself five years from now? That's a good question, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know, I decided to take one day at a time. Are you one of these guys that wants to just sell out and get out of the industry totally, or do you want to stay, remain entrenched in this industry? Well, I had the opportunity to sell. Mm -hmm. And what clicked was, what am I going to do? So you like what you're doing. Yeah. Way. That's great. So, so I'll go out and build another brand. Mm -hmm. So why don't I just stick with what I already, right. you know? Um, I don't know. I like to find, I like to find a, another entity that, can bring something to the table that I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe from the business side. Can, let me ask you this you know? question. Can, can you have too much money? Define money. I mean cash. Is, can you have too much money? Is, is, it, is, 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 no. it, is it a bad thing to have too much money? No, no but the thing is, is that at, at, at that point, what do you do with it? I, I, that's what I want to ask you. Yeah, what do you do with it? Yeah. I, don't think, I don't think I'm doing this for the money anymore. Right. I'm not saying I'm freaking gazillionaire. You know, um, I, th I find myself stressing out on <laughs> shit that has nothing to do with money, <laughs> you know, yeah. like a typo on a label. Right. right. I don't sleep all night, <laughs> you know. Um, that means you really enjoy what you're yeah, doing. That's, yeah. what <laughs> that's a good thing because a lot of people out there don't have that. Yeah. They don't like what they do. Yeah. You love what you do. I, you don't I, even care about the money. No, you don't, probably, don't. you can go eat every meal out if you want to. Yeah. and It doesn't even affect you. You I, don't think I, about I it anymore. I, I, you know, I... I Beauty fit to me is... Um, we have our own self-imposed stress. We don't even need to. That's crazy. That's how you know it's you like much. what you do. Yeah. Too much. That's how you know you way, like what you way, do. Way too much. <laughs> I, um, I love, I, I love the, the fact that I can wake up every morning, right? Yeah. And when I read emails, especially the reviews on the website, okay? We don't solicit those things. Right. Okay? And women just keep... You know, it's like when we used to compete, right? Does that validate you? Oh do you feel God. like, oh man, I, I did the right thing? It feels so good. I, I got to tell you, that to me, it was, it was an extension of me competing. Mm -hmm. You know, when people come up to you like, hey man, I you read your great. article, in the you look great, I read your article in the magazine, yeah. I tried your arm workout, thank you, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it kind of, it kind of like plugged into, you know, the, the IFB Pro, now I'm like... It's feeding your ego. Yeah, well, yeah. Shit, it feeds our ego, we need it. We're all ego maniacal maniacs. But to me, it's like, I'm, I'm also helping, I'm, I'm, I keep helping other people. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, what we did was like, I mean, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you're not... <laughs> Do you think the guys today are taking it too far, pushing the limit too much? I don't think they're training as hard. Yo, they're not. We know that. I've, so I've said so that, that to me is, I, when you say too far. I mean, do you think that the drug issue today is, is, is too heavily Because emphasized? they're not training that Right, hard. right. And do you think that that's really the problem? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think they're depending on the, on the drugs and they're not training. Do you think the internet is good or bad for this? What's, what's going on? Bad. Why? Because I think they're overexposing themselves. Hmm. I think they should keep. I think they should keep something to themselves right. and show up. I agree. I think that. You know? uh, I mean, how many how many people out there right now do you see that have a million followers that don't even compete? Look at Kai Green. He's got more than one million followers. Right. It's crazy when you see when you see these social media starlets. I call them. Back in the day, they would have been jerk offs. Some yeah. of these guys. I mean, is it amazing how the 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 landscape has changed about who's the authorities and who people watch and, and who people consider it's important. Smoke and mirrors, man. So do you think that, that, do you think that camouflage is going to blow up in everyone's face at some point know, and people are going to get sick of all these people? I think, it's, I think it, it blows up people's face when they see them in, in the real world. Mm -hmm. You know, I see guys, I see girls showing exercises that are totally wrong. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, ah, this guy people to do this it's totally wrong but do you think at some point our our industry is going to say you know what what are we doing watching this stuff and, and, and making these people our, our, our stars our, our, our people to, that we want to admire you know but what you happened say, to the bodybuilder that we say in our admire? industry that's that's mass that's mass that's mass market now yeah that's, that's social media is yeah, mass market true so it's not our industry our industry is a, we're a very very tight yeah finite bunch you know, of people bunch of people that social media stuff that you see, you know, okay, Kai, fine. I'm talking about the guys who don't even compete. No, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. They're not our industry. That's true. So you think most of their following is, is, is maybe outside the realm of competitive sure. bodybuilding and sure. that's why they have so many people sure. following them. Absolutely. 
Interesting. I think so. But it's kind of bringing the two industries together. Because one's bleeding into the other. Yeah, and, and I think that the, the true hardcore bodybuilding fans are pissed off that these you know keyboard warriors are, are, are making assessments on their physiques. Right. Whereas back in the day, that never would have happened. Never there was more reverence for the, for the, right. for the competitive body. But don't forget, now you got physique, you got men's fitness. Mm -hmm. So I'm not against it. I kind of like it. I think it's just, it's overdone. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to bring the men's physique and you're going to bring the, the men's fitness, you know, and then they have these crossovers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you got a guy doing men's, fi men's fitness. Next thing you know, the same guy's doing men's physique. Yeah. Well, you so, got physique, classic physique. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you got. yeah. The classic physique, right? We went to a show this Saturday, we had four guys do men's fitness <laughs> and the same four guys are doing classic, classic physique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At one point, do you say, you know... And they're doing masters, open, right, novice, right. you know. Same guys over and over again. Well, I think that's the promoter. I want as many application fees as I can get. I'll take them but all. But again, it goes back to yeah. what we talked about. Are they promoting shows for to get entry fees? Or are they promoting shows for entertainment and create a... It's both, but I think if you're a promoter, it's, it's to make money. You, you make know. money off your sponsors. Yeah. Well, I, I don't. I think. I think it's much harder to get sponsors nowadays. I'm not, Do you I'm, sponsor shows? Uh, you don't see me at, at shows. No, you don't sponsor. Does no. Beauty Fit sponsor shows? No. No. Because why? It's you don't get the you not get the I, return I, on I, it. I, I I have a relationship with certain promoters. Right. That I support and they support me, but I don't. I don't call people like, hey, you know, I'd like to sponsor your show. Oh, you know, when you first come out as a company, you go and do the shows why? because you want exposure. But I think you're an established brand. I know I'm an established brand. It doesn't make sense for me to go to all these shows and, and incur the expense. I don't think there's a return anymore because people know my brand. They know your brand. But, but he, I'm going to disagree with you on that because okay. here's the thing. Me as a brand, I want to get in front of people, uh, in front of as many people as I can. Right. Okay. Because my products are touch, feel, smell, mm -hmm. taste. Okay. So I want to give them the samples. Right. Okay? So how come you're not doing the shows then? Because the same people go on every show every weekend. Mm -hmm. In Florida, there was 100 shows. Yeah. Every weekend, same show, right. same people. Right. So I'm, I'm actually paying money. I would be paying money mm -hmm. to go set a booth up so I can the same hundred people who came last week and to give more samples. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't do those shows. Right. So why wouldn't you just pick like one of those shows? I do. Sometimes oh, okay. I pick the Southern States or right. I pick the, you know, right. I, um, it's just a different, it's a different, it's, it's a not different, the same. No, it's not because it was an experience back in the 80s and 90s when you went to a show, you wanted to engage and interact with the right. booth people because there was a lot of time. Right. It wasn't, the show didn't take 18 hours. It took two and a half hours and the night show was over. And every booth had their athlete in yeah, there. Yeah, it was they, exciting. They, they took pictures, they had fun. Now it's, they throw the samples out. Like, because who wants to stay yeah. there for, for 18 right. hours and work a booth? It's, it's a very long day and I, I think, the, I think online marketing is way more important. Yeah, and that's yeah. why the promoters realize that. So what they do is they, they, have, to, they have to get the competitors right. in. They have all these new divisions. They need multiple signups. And that's how they make money. And I think the promoters are making more money not worrying about sponsors and getting the application fees than they did in the past. So, and people like us are using social media more to market the brands. Right. And no, so the industry has changed. It's, it's a big difference. It's changing. I, I, you know, I don't know if it's for the better or for the worse. It's just not it's just, the same. It's just, it's just, it's it's just, just different. That's all. And I think the companies that survive and do well in this industry are the people that are able to morph and right. evolve with the evolving industry. If you don't, you, you go down the sewer and you wind up, you know, you, you try to start a company and you're trying to advertise in magazines, you know, <laughs> can you get it? No one reads magazines. Yeah. So it, it's a, it's a, it's a brave new world in a sense. Yeah. As long as, as long as the brands communicate with the consumer, mm -hmm. they find a way to, to, to reach out. You know, I call them touch points. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, keep, you have touch points with the consumer. Mm -hmm. you, stay, you stay around. Jimmy, thanks for coming pleasure, to the man. studio. Always a, a pleasure. I'm glad to thanks, see you doing man. well. Yeah. And uh, Likewise, man. Maybe we'll see Jimmy Mentis up on a uh, IFBB Pro yeah. stage yeah. in the future. That's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably more of a chance of seeing me, and that's never going to happen yeah. either. Because uh, no, I, I have good. to be—I've re been rebuilt. You know, I have a new shoulder. Oh, I'm going to go for another cool. new shoulder, maybe a new knee. Who knows? Or a new quad. Uh, you know, you're not—you're not doing too bad. You look pretty no, good. I got a you fake know. hip, and I'm good to go. Oh, you do have a yeah, fake yeah, hip. Full hip replacement. When did you get that? Seven years ago. Eight years ago. Wow. Yeah. Is that from doing heavy so, uh, leg press? Bone to bone. Really? Yeah. And the other one's fine. Everyone's fine. Yeah, so far. Yeah, well, you're walking fine. That's so, good. Yeah, I'm good. Thank God for technology, right? <laughs> I, I remember as a kid, I used to watch a $6 million man, yeah. and I used to be like, you know, maybe one day I'll, I'll be right. like that. Yeah. You know, now maybe you, 20 years from now, they'll be putting bionic lights. You can't even sell me for original parts anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right, well, that's going to take us to the end of uh, another episode of Live With, brought to you by Yamamoto Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo with Jimmy Mentis. We'll see you next time.